Hello and welcome to Elementary Level Discus Resources for Building Engaging Lessons and Assignments. I'm Linda Heimberger, the Electronic Resources Training and Outreach Coordinator with South Carolina State Library. You can see my email address there at the bottom and I'll also show that again later. Um, Discus, South Carolina's virtual library, is a service of the South Carolina State Library for the residents of South Carolina. Today we're going to be looking at the new resources we've just recently added, Tutor.com and Tumble Math for K through 5. We're also going to be looking at these other databases, World Almanac for Kids, to find printables, videos, articles, maps, uh, Learn360 also for those resources. Discus Kids is going to enable your students to search more than one database at once. Uh, we'll go into that in a moment. And then Galen Context Elementary is also geared to those students. So how are we going to cover all of this in a short period of time, you may ask? Here's your answer. So we're going to take a step-by-step -step approach to help you as teachers, uh, literacy coaches, librarians, pull together units and lesson plans around a topic um, and be able to gather different formats of information on those topics. These are a few here. We might pick one of these. We might uh, look at another, but we will stick with those core subjects for K through 5 as we go. We're going to be looking at it within this framework where you can start anywhere uh, on this little uh, piece of uh, on the top left, get kid-friendly background information, some of that information that will be there, videos that are available to you, uh, along with handouts and interactives, magazine and news articles that you want your young students to be exposed to different types of information. Uh, we'll also, again, look at that uh, searching across the databases with Discus Kids. And then also we'll pull a couple of the other databases, depending on uh, which topics we end up going with there. So before we go much further, your turn is to choose a topic you are teaching soon or around which you are building a unit or lesson so you can keep this in mind as you learn about each resource today. You can also feel free to pause this video at any time and do some of your own searching as we go through these. Uh, there is a Discus login screen that you may find that uh, when you're using a remote learning device such as Google Chromebook, um, a smartphone, uh, or other devices that uh, that you have or your students or parents have. For the most part, when you're at the school, you will have seamless access and not have to worry about this. But do make sure that you have that current Discus login. Uh, you can contact your school's media specialist or Discus contact. Um, you can share this with your students, teachers, your school, parents uh, who are in South Carolina, either by print, print, email, Google Classroom, or LMS as long as it is behind an authenticated system where someone has to log in to get it. The only thing you can't do is the last bullet that says do not post the login credentials to open websites or post in documents or newsletters that will be uh, accessible by the open web. Um, so this is good for you to know if you're ever sending a link and the student gets this um, screen, uh, that th that's when you're going to actually use the Discus login. So you're going to want to access the K-5 through resources either from Discus Kids, the grade level, early childhood and elementary, or the A to Z list. This is what you'll find on the A to Z, uh, I'm sorry, on the uh, grade level listing, an alphabetical listing A to Z in a text format. You're also going to be able to find them listed alphabetically uh, with colorful logos on the other entry points. Tumble Math is the first one that I want to actually show you today. Uh, we'll go live to actually look at it live, but this is a, a collection of over 250 storybooks for K through 6 math learning and cross-curricular literacy. Many of the books are, are about math directly and some of them are indirectly telling stories that incorporate those math concepts. Notice there are several different um, tabs at the top that you can actually navigate through to locate those books by the different 
the different math concepts. We'll look at that live in just a moment. The real-time tutoring is available for your students K through 5 uh, and also those all the way through 12th grade in South Carolina from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. So if you know a student is struggling, maybe they've scored poorly on a, a math test or they're struggling with a math problem, uh, maybe they're writing maybe their first paper, fourth grade, fifth grade, where it's a more advanced kind of writing and they need help with main ideas or they need help with their reading. This is going to be available to them uh, from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday through Saturday. You do want to make sure that you access it through the Discus website and that's actually our next screen here. Rule number one with tutor.com is do not go out to www.tutor.com to access yeah, even though it's our natural instinct to do so because the name of the resource is tutor.com you're going to want to make sure you access through the Discus website uh, there. So if you ever have a teacher or a student complaining that they can't connect to a tutor you want to check that first. And again you want to make sure they're going through the proper channels there. So I'm going to uh, go now live to the Discus website here where you can see these um, pieces uh, in a live format. The Discus Kids part here. Uh, the student can do, uh, search across multiple databases here. They can also go directly into the databases uh, in alphabetical order here as well. So they would be able to access any of those databases. You also have the grade level access here that we showed you on the slide and then the A to Z list. So if you quickly wanted to get to tutor.com or to tumble math you could get there here. So we're going to look first quickly at tutor.com to show you what your students would need to know here. Uh, they can connect with the tutor directly uh, with K through 5. They do not need to create an account so all you need to do is close that and have the student or parent close that. They would be able to view from the little home page here. They're going to be able to view all the different uh, topics that they can be tutored in here. Uh, even parents, you'll notice on the bottom right hand side here, there's parent coaching for student success to help the parents with setting expectations and doing different pieces to assist their student, uh, their, their children at home. Also, um, at, at the top, you're, you're going to find that they can be tutor, tutored in various core subjects um, and they can do get a tutor now and then select what they're trying to study, math, reading uh, there if they need to go uh, reading grades K through 7 if they're looking to learn understand about main ideas or identifying facts and opinions those kind of things they can actually select the subject there the most popular is the math so they might do math for fifth grade for instance uh, choose their subject there and then they could type in I'm having trouble with this math lesson or I uh, you know did poorly on my test and I need a little assistance learning something about fractions etc. They can also attach a file there and then simply connect now. So that's a great resource for your uh, students to be able to use outside of class when they're struggling so that they're not getting way behind um, uh, in, in learning a concept or learning about social studies or science concept, math concept, etc. The next resource that is one of our newest acquisitions is Tumble Math. This is for grades uh, K through 6 there. Uh, I showed you that uh, the initial slide there. You can actually search this by math search on the top right if you want to, if you maybe know um, certain math publishers that you are your go-to publishers that you're familiar with. You can search by author or title. Those aren't as familiar to most people with the, the math books. So it's still probably best to search by the genre, as they call it here, which actually is the math concept. Um, notice whenever you click on one of those concepts there or across the top, you can uh, browse through the books that are available there, such as for the subtraction. You're going to find quizzes that go along with those books and lesson plans uh, that, uh, that reinforce the different math concepts 
from this story. These are all read aloud uh, books there and you're going to find when you actually open them on the read online here uh, this will be able to be used on different devices the Chromebooks, the uh, tablets, the iPads um, and the students will be able to see that. You can actually have it go automatically and read the words and highlight or you can do the manual piece where the student can turn the pages themselves and read aloud. Um, so there, it kind of makes math learning fun here uh, for them to have it pulled into a story uh, as well. They, then they can always toggle back to the automatic if they want it to be read aloud as the words are highlighted there. Um, so though all of the storybooks sort of open and operate in that manner there and you can also see for you teachers and librarians you can also access from the index here on the top of the navigation bar if you want to link uh, one of the books to an assignment maybe put a link on a word doc uh, put a, a link into your google classroom assignment page you can find that link let's say if we're wanting to find um, a, a book here on um, we'll just say countdown to fall here. Um, you can click on the title to see if it's the one you want to use. This is a good time of year for that. Colorful leaves counting there. It tells you some of the, the key parts of what the book uh, has to offer. But you can go back to that index and find that, uh, locate that book. These are all in alphabetical order by title. So you would uh, just simply scroll down to locate that title again. Um, countdown to fall, go to your book ID to the left and you would just simply copy and paste that link uh, into the lesson that you want to uh, provide to your student to say you know all the students in class need to read this book and then we're going to share or we're going to read this aloud today especially for your virtual students if you are uh, opening this up obviously on a on a in a in a face-to-face -face classroom situation, you wouldn't necessarily need to link it there, uh, but you could for reinforcement for that piece. So that is your uh, tumble math part. And we're gonna go back to our discus site here. And we're gonna start out by looking at a, a geography term, a geog geography search. So if your students are wanting background information on say a country, maybe they want a map and background information on a country, they could go out to the World Almanac for Kids Elementary that you see here. And when they open that up, they can do a direct search up in the top right, or they can just browse the topics. And notice these are very easily browsed here. Um, they're broken out uh, by pretty much they go along with our state standards here in South Carolina with citizenship, community leaders, character building, symbols of the United States. Um, if they're looking for explorers here. Uh, but in this case, if they're wanting to go and learn about the world and learn about countries, um, they can do that just by uh, going up to the top here and um, searching directly on their country. So if they're studying Egypt here, they can search inside, they find a map, in, an interesting article about tomb painting here. Uh, these are the different topics that the word Egypt comes up about celebrations of Egypt, for instance, scientists and inventors in Egypt. So they can begin their research there you would also have as a teacher in your teacher resources you would have something if you wanted to provide a map quiz you would actually have the outline maps available so the students could study the detailed map on their side of the resource and you would be able to pull up just an outline map and have them fill in the lakes and the rivers and the uh, different capitals and sections within countries or states as well notice the 50 states are also there from the topic side that the students see here, you're also going to find um, additional 
pieces that uh, you might want to emphasize, such as flowers, plants, and trees, if you're learning, teaching them about seeds and plants. Once you click on one of those general topics, such as that, notice you're going to find any fun facts, videos that are related to that topic, games and puzzles, um, and then articles are all on the left. So if you are wanting to teach the students about planting seeds and how they grow, this would be a, a really good article for them here. Uh, in the elementary level, they would also be able to print that article out. You could share it to your Google Classroom so that all of the students would access it and read it if you choose to do it that way. So there are several different ways you would be able to utilize these resources. Types of flowers, those broken out, etc. there. And what you'll also find in the teacher resources is you would be able to pull printable handouts out for those different uh, topics about plants and uh, plants and animals that you see here. So we have food chains on that part. Um, you're going to find the parts of a flower worksheet, parts of a plant booklet. Uh, some of these supplementary pieces that you can um, simply print out and use in a face-to-face -face class or you can download as a PDF and send it to your students, post it uh, for them to be able to access electronically uh, inside your Google Classroom or email it uh, to them as well. So you can see this is something they could use uh, within that piece. And you're also going to be able to find um, in the teacher resources, you're also going to be able to locate other handy uh, science diagrams, science projects, etc. that help you uh, in the classroom. So you can do the direct search or you can just browse through the topics that you see here. Someone earlier said, you know, do you have any uh, videos or any information about Halloween. In this particular database we have Halloween articles that are here under holiday celebrations. You could also just go to topics. Uh, maybe you're looking more at Thanksgiving time. You can go to the holiday celebrations section here, find the fun facts, and also locate Thanksgiving. So that's a good way for that student to start learning. Uh, there about the topic. There's also the read aloud feature that will read the article aloud to the student um, so that they can hear it as well as see the words to the article there. You're also going to find that you might uh, need to take the students to another search. Maybe you're wanting to pull a video to introduce a unit on plants and seed life or Thanksgiving, etc. You can do that again from the A to Z list or the early childhood list here. You can go into Learn360, which is a robust video collection. Um, you can just go directly to do a direct search, such as typing in Thanksgiving here or Halloween. For instance, um, you can also limit these by grade level. So if you're only interested in those that would relate to pre-K to two or three to five grade level students, you can uh, limit those uh, also there. Celebrating Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving becomes a holiday. And within this video collection, if you click on one of the uh, videos here, you're going to be able to see the segments within that full program and you're able to send this to your Google Classroom. So if you want the students to view this and then respond or talk about it in class, um, they could have that uh, connection uh, easily to access as well. There are also transcripts, as you see here, that can be downloaded. Uh, so if you want them to then use some of this information to write their own report or compare their family's Thanksgiving to one of the first Thanksgivings, etc., you can do that. Also, um, you do have a closed captioning here. So when you play the video, you can turn the words on or off to help those students that that might be useful for them to see the words as it's being read.
Notice there are also a citation. So if a student maybe is doing a group project about a holiday, they will be able to easily cite where they got that information. Um, just to continue to reinforce that uh, part of, of learning as well. Notice this says Learn360 District. When I click on this logo, you can go to the Smart menu and automatically limit to Pre-K through 5. So you'll see that the logo now says lo uh, Elementary there instead of um, District. But notice this shows you all the printables that are available here, the games and activities uh, that are here and available. Uh, for you to have them pull up on their devices and use the drag and drop math, the math games, social studies related games, state detective, etc. Some of the language arts games for spelling and other pieces for them to learn. Uh, there are also the reading activities for different topics and grade levels. So you can see grade two, four, five here um, also that you can pull up and utilize. You can go back to that uh, elementary section there and browse all the videos that relate to that grade level. So we could do the browse subjects here and you're going to be able to see uh, all the different videos that relate there for the students. So if they are looking at social studies here, here again, the holidays and celebrations section, if you're going with the Thanksgiving topic, or if your theme is more geography related and maybe you are wanting to then pick up a nice video that uh, goes along with um, Egypt, for example, if you want to teach mapping skills to students there, uh, if you want to have anything to do with the human geography or physical geography, you can pull those videos and you can just also go and search directly on Egypt and see what you find there. Once you conduct uh, a search directly such as this, you can uh, still limit by grade level if, that, if that's a preference for you there. So if you're introducing a topic on countries, um, this is another great place to go uh, for you there to, to pick up one more resource. So we've kind of looked at a couple of the databases. Perhaps you're wanting your students to branch out and uh, learn more about different types of magazines and book sources. You can take them into the Gale in Context Elementary database, which is also um, one that's newer because it replaced our kids info bits if any of you all are familiar with that but as we continue to build this uh, unit you might want to pull in some of this information as well so you can see geography is listed here as one of their topics and social studies so different angles when you're talking about Egypt the culture and the people so if we click on geography on this piece um, students can learn about how to read maps and globes. You can take them through different pieces uh, to learn about the lakes and rivers there. Take them out to the continents so and the countries. So they could just go to countries here and select Egypt or whatever country they're assigned. They can actually be, you, you can use these also for assignments. So you can tell them, I want you to find a newspaper article about Egypt. I want you to find a magazine article uh, about Egypt there. Um, so those, this kind of helps to break out for the student that's just getting exposed to different types of information. They can pull up uh, the magazine articles also there. These are also read alouds so they can listen aloud by clicking on the speaker and if they want to save this maybe send it to their Google Drive to um, save it to their Google Drive or their OneDrive they're able to do that also. Uh, in addition they can cite their source easily it will tell them where this source comes from so they can get in a really good habit to not plagiarize and to cite their sources. So the lovely beauty of the, the DISCUS framework is that we haven't gone out to the open web at all um, in doing our research. We're just sticking with finding good, reliable resources without the burden of trying to determine whether or not a source is good or they're able to use that source.
Notice they can also do a direct search here on plants and seeds or Thanksgiving or once again on Egypt uh, to locate those those pieces there um, as well. So this will kind of help uh, help them expand their searching skills or critical thinking skills, asking questions about a topic, etc. They can also just read this overview about Egypt here um, and be able to get a snapshot view of it. And then if you want to bring in more materials uh, on a topic such as this, you could ta actually take it out now to culture grams, which is all about culture, geography uh, of the world there. So we have the world edition, the kids edition, and the states edition. So you could go into culture grams and the continent of Africa and choose Egypt. And you're going to find some great things to introduce students to different places in the world here. Uh, for one, they're going to be able to get a detailed map or an outline map in one place. They're going to be able to listen to the country's national anthem there. So you can turn that on for them. They can hear that national anthem. That's always fun during the Olympics time, the International Olympics. Notice also they have uh, currency calculators, distance calculators, the famous people that they would find in that country there um, and then you'll also find within that piece um, if we go back uh, to Egypt here I'm just going to go back to Egypt's home page um, you're also going to find that they do have the listen aloud for this and they are still able to save to Google Drive and you can save it to Google Classroom as well um, so as you're kind of taking them on this grand tour of different resources, um, you can use these in your instruction or assign something from a database for them to use for group projects uh, or just for investigating their countries on their own. Um, so I'm going to go back into Culture Grams here in the Kids Edition and back to our Egypt for you to also see that they have interviews, uh, slideshows here along the right, recipes from Egypt. They also have a timeline of history. So if you're getting more in the social studies side than not just the geography, you can uh, they can read that information there. Uh, if they are studying holidays in the US, they could compare a holiday to another country here. Uh, as well. You'll notice there is citation information uh, for this database also. So they're going to have a lot of consistency across the Discus platform there. The other thing that you can do is actually go back out to the Discus site and let them look for ebooks either in tumble books or in the primary search reference ebooks here. They could do a search on Egypt for their topic here and just search by keyword to be able to locate any books that would um, would be a, a full book that they could open and use. The beauty of these books, the EBSCO ebooks and the Tumble books, are that more than one student can use the book at a time. Um, so that's a, a good feature there. So if you are sharing something out to a classroom for them to um, locate the book and and utilize it more than one person can use it at a time so as that continues to load I'll, sh I'll direct your attention to the top left here where they're going to be able to see the table of contents listed to easily access daily life in Egypt food feast and famine technology I'm sure they'll get into the pyramids there and then you'll see the search within also on your left where they can search for something specific so if they are wanting to just uh, search on King Tut here uh, within the book it's going to show you all the pages where King Tut or Tutankhamun um, are available and that is going to then link to the book the pages in the book and I'm going to pause for just a moment while that loads it looks like it's still trying to load and I have a lot of my other 
pieces here at the top of my tabs. I'm trying to close out of all of those while it loads. So uh, they can search within the book on a specific piece. They can browse that table of contents. I'm just going to see if it'll stop loading if I go up to the to the front cover uh, for you all to be able to see the book. So you can see here they're also able to download different chapters. So if you're doing a they're doing a group project and they're each maybe reporting on different aspects of Egypt. Uh, about one is doing the reading and writing, one's talking about the pharaohs, one of them wants to report out on the Nile. Uh, that is where they would actually download the chapter. And I'm just going to click on the Mighty Nile here for you to see the book itself. There, students are able to email pages. They're able to print out pages there. You can actually link to it in your Google Classroom. So that's some more of the uh, power and capability of using some of these uh, books as well. So that was actually in our primary search reference ebook collection. Um, if you've gone out to these different uh, databases and you want your students to be able to search more than one at a time, that's when you want to take them up to the Discus Kids piece and they can search directly on their country here. Egypt, for example, if they want something specific like writing in Egypt, they could do that also. Notice this book does appear as an ebook because that is an EBSCO product. Um, if you want to show your upper level elementary students how to limit some of these results, you can go to the toggle, the little far left here, you'll see a little toggle where they can um, adjust the publication dates of the information. They can also go and strictly look at magazines. They can uh, do magazines there. They can just look at videos so they can um, filter that way as well. And if they want to then go back into one of our specific databases, they're going to be able to see those databases that have pulled some, uh, some of the information on Egypt there. So, uh, the Ten Plagues of Egypt, for instance, there. The Ancient Egypt Timeline presents a chronology of events. Um, so there are a lot of more resources that students can find there. If you're doing the topic on plants and seeds and how plants grow, you could add that. Um, you could actually let them do that search. Actually, I want to show you they would need to click on new search there on the left just to make sure they're getting a clean search, uh, clean search results, plants and seeds uh, as a search there. And you're going to see uh, this is a video from Learn360, your first one that's listed here. The next one is the primary search reference book um, that you find here about how a plant can form uh, fruit and seeds when it's pollinated and how that works. What kind of plant has the smallest seed in the world is a video. So you can see that that's going to be pulling from different key resources. Uh, this one is actually from the weekly reader. So they could pull that up. They could save this to their Google Drive. They could print out the article if they're wanting to use it for an assignment. So as you see here, um, this is a little activity about seeds and water that the younger students would benefit from being able to use. That's something else uh, that, that you're able to uh, access for them. And you can download that as a PDF as you see there at the top. So if your topic is more um, on the, let's say, the math side of the house, you can again go to those early childhood uh, elementary databases listed alphabetically there. And you can start out with like your tumble math book, as we as we mentioned before, uh, where you could actually pull and link a tumble math book. You could also um, go back into Learn360 for that and pull uh, a resource that goes along with your math uh, there. Uh, so if you were uh, studying subtraction, you could do a direct search there, pull up a um, pull up those that are relevant for your grade levels. 
let's just say pre-k to 2 as an example there. Pull those into your Google Classroom if you want to use that. You could also then uh, check out some of these other pieces that would be useful there within the printables, for instance. Um, you could see what is available as a printable handout that might help reinforce something that you're showing in the class. The games and uh, activities that would then be relevant. Uh, you'll see those will be able to come up here so they would be able to tell that they're using those particular skills to play those video games um, and interactive games. You could also use uh, information from the mailbox. So these are for grades K through six. If you want to pull up a resource here and incorporate it into a lesson there. Uh, so you have a lot of, of across the curriculum, whether it's social studies, uh, language arts, if you want them to learn about different authors, for instance, you can pull from that uh, as well. So while we are still at our Discus site here, we can um, actually go back and look in the Discus Kids that we mentioned before, the Smart Search here. Um, students are also able to tie in more complicated kinds of searches, such as the uh, the effects of pollution on um, aquatic life or on fish uh, there. So they can, um, students can get a little bit more search power um, and ability. So if we do uh, pollution and fish, I think I misspelled that term there, pollution and fish, um, they're going to be able to find some different articles there uh, from Science News for Students, etc. So also keep in mind that that, that uh, discus, uh, the discus kids also allows them to do a little bit more um, concept searching there as well. So then they could uh, go in and do their filtering uh, kind of as we mentioned before. They only want the most recent articles and that kind of thing. Uh, they'd be able to 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 utilize that source too in addition. So um, if you had, uh, for instance, if you had a student that uh, was looking at uh, anything to do with something having an effect on something else there, um, if you're talking about uh, tigers and extinction, or something a little bit more advanced than just, you know, go and look up this tiger, uh, that would be something that would be useful for the students there. Uh, we'll just do the full text there. And once again, you could pull that up uh, into the Google Classroom. As you see on your far right side, uh, the Google Classroom link, the Google Drive link, the student would be able to read the article and they would also then um, be able to cite it with the little page that you see on the far right. Again, it's going to pull in that citation uh, material for them there, and you would just need to direct them to the MLA that they would choose. Um, so th that's something within that, uh, the Discus News, that would give them a little bit more search power. If you, they wanted to go back to the result list or start a new search, one of the other topics that a teacher recently brought uh, up for K through five is the whole idea of westward expansion, uh, the Oregon Trail, for instance. So if students wanted to be able to to branch out and get information there, uh, they could do that also for other topics. The uh, going back to the discus site for a final look, you would have um, the Britannica School is an excellent. Uh, excellent resource as well because it can actually serve the the students that are on the earlier end the early students of like kindergarten second third graders that are doing research but do not need those necessarily need those um, articles that are 
way over their heads. For instance, the elementary Britannica school here, they could go in and search on Oregon Trail here for the westward expansion topic and be able to get um, a nice map here of the Oregon Trail um, and cite that uh, as they would need to use it there. Finding images, finding videos. This is also scalable. So if they are pulling up an article here, I'll just do the Oregon Trail here, and they're a little bit more advanced, they could scale it up a notch and get a little bit more advanced uh, read there. Also, there, this, these are also listen alouds. So that's something else to, to put in your uh, toolkit there to show the, the students a little bit more power and search options that they have uh, there as well. So that's what we have for you today. If any of you are interested in any of our other training resources, such as those online archives that will go in more detail and depth about each database, if you want to uh, use the basics for elementary school there in your classes, you're welcome to do that. Uh, also, those uh, training resource handouts that I mentioned are here, and those will break down. They're just quick little handouts, PDFs that you can share out to your students to uh, and your parents to help them see what are in the databases and where they'll find different types of information as well. And then finally, uh, from that same website on the training site, you can sign up for any of these ongoing webinars. We're going to have a new look coming up uh, this week for Britannica School, and you're welcome to join us on Thursday for that. If you want more information about tutoring for elementary, that's coming up as well. So you would just simply click on one of the links and go and register uh, for those free free tours there also. So that is uh, Discus in a nutshell for you and you are welcome to go ahead and go and explore. You can take your topics and uh, go and look maybe find a related video which you may introduce the lesson or unit to apply some of the skills that you've learned today. You could also pause the video while you go and um, do some searching in tumble math or tumble books and locate a storybook and practice doing the URL that we showed you. And you could also go out to Discus Kids, do a search, you know, find out if there are any eBooks. Uh, it's always good for you to be able to see what's available before you make an assignment around something so that that would take out one of the areas of frustration for your students if, if they're um, not able to find um, articles on particular topics you could teach them about other keyword searching uh, and such there. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you with our contacts so if any of you are interested in contacting the Discus team uh, you will have uh, access to our email addresses here. Certainly your media specialist would be your first best contact at your local school Thank you for joining us today. I hope that you gathered a lot of good tools to use to build your lessons and units.